Hello everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel and welcome to a new playthrough on the channel. We've got a little bit of extra time today, so we're going to head back to Guadalcanal tonight to play Mag 23 Guadalcanal from Historic Wings. I, I, I don't think I mentioned this in the synopsis, but we're actually getting dumped into the, bat, into the middle of Guadalcanal, a battle during World War II, where the goal of the U.S. Naval, the U.S. Air Squadron was to try, to try to hold the Japanese back. So, I've talked about this before. I had a lot of hesitation around book-based games after my previous experiences, but I've been enjoying the, especially the strong narrative focus in this one, so we're okay to bring it back to the channel. I've got the counter, I've still got the old paper counters I've been using present. Everything's ready for me to make a new set of counters, but that's not something I'm going to, it's not something that's going to be ready for this video, obviously. But, let's take a quick look at the squadron so we can see who we're flying with. Here's our squadron so far. We've got a, we had a total of 30, 42, 47 pilots to choose from. We've lost 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 in the first week to either serious wounds or being killed in action, including our CO Phoenix, who was killed on the very first day, one of the first takeoffs that we ever tried to take. So fortunately, we do have enough, enough planes in the squadron that we're going to fly. Uh, right. Yep, so we're going into August 26th, 1942 with this mission. But let's move over to the main game area and see how everything looks there. Just taking a quick look at the shot, I've got my charts. I've got my chart up here where we're on, it might be hard to see, but we are on Japan advancing right now. I've got daily operations phases so I can keep that straight. Land combat operation, well, combat operation charts, then the maps of what's all going on on the board, depending on what kind of mission we roll. So, with that in mind, we are headed to August 26, 1942, right? Yes, August 26, 1942. So with that, let's start setting up the mission. The first thing we need to figure out is if we're going to fly a combat air patrol. And that requires faith in my, co in my Coast Watchers, which I have decidedly not had this game. So, I think we're going to pass on that. Combat air patrol is going to be a no, so next we need to roll for what kind of weather we're looking at. I know I'm taking a chance on this one with letting the... I know I'm taking a chance on this with not having any possible reports coming in, but first we need to roll for the weather. A six says it's nice and clear, so plus two weather mod. Making some notes off shot. So we've got a nice clear weather day. All right, and then next up we need to turn, determine what type of mission we're rolling, so we're adding two to whatever this role is for phase two to determine our mission. A five means we're going on an air mission. This should be interesting. Once again, I'm making some notes here off camera. Looking forward to hopefully doing some damage to the Japanese. Oh, wait. I just remembered we've had that, sh we've got that Shotai Supreme coming. We've had that for a while because we haven't had any, we haven't had any air missions coming, come through yet. So we're going to have, we're going to have quite the fight on our hands with the Japanese. I think that was from, that was from either the 21st or the 22nd. I think we had that come through as a random event. I'm just going through my notes here. Right. I completely spaced on that. So it must have been... I think it was the 22nd, but yes, we're going to... So next time we are facing zeros, which is probably going to be tonight, but I'm jumping the gun a bit on that. We're going to be facing two addition... We're going to be rolling plus 2d6. But I'm jumping ahead of myself there because we need to see what the Coast Watchers are telling us. I'm actually going to bring the logbook over here so I can start working on my notes. 
Post Watcher reports. Uh, right. Three, four, five. Bougainville, New Georgia, Santa Isabel, uh, Savo Island, and West Guadalcanal. All right, I'm looking at my Wildcats, and I'm going to be leaning on the Wildcat part of my squadron very heavily because I'm expecting this to be an air mission. So, we're rolling for Bougainville first to see if we get any reports. I'll bring the chart, bring the book down so I can see it a little better rather than having to crane my neck. That's a two, so they're not telling us much. How about for New Georgia? Let's see if they're giving me anything to work with. No, they're not giving me anything either. How about Santa Isabel? They're telling me exactly Bubkiss as well. Now I kind of wish I had flown a combat air patrol. But hindsight, as they say, Savo Island. Okay, a four actually gives me a report. Plus mount, one mountain above Panweli and West Guadalcanal. I'm hoping for another roll here. They are not telling me much either, so great. All right, so we skip over the radar plots because that hadn't been in yet. Reported Japanese force, which I have about, I have very little faith at all that this is going to actually be what we're facing. So we're rolling on, we've got no modifiers right now, thankfully. So the reported Japanese force is six A6M zeros with one with an ace. Just making a note of that. Six A6M zero, one ace. And yeah, I don't have any faith in my Coast Watchers on that one, but we're going to go ahead and assign pilots. Now, the remaining pilots who aren't injured are kind of clamoring on the Pagoda today, so I think we're going to send primarily... I think we're going to send primarily Wildcats up to try to work on... to try to do something with this mission. So... We're going to assign pilots, and it's going to be all F4Fs. So let's see who I've got available to fly this one. Um, I think I'm going to send my CO... Ruff is going to go up with, uh, we're on August 26th, so we have Nightmare back. We'll send Nightmare on Ruff's wing. Let's see, who else do we want to send up? I think we'll send, let's see, Fong's injured, so I can't send him up. We'll send Jester as a flight leader up. And I'll put, I'll put Hunter on his wing, who actually, actually, Hunter's a flight leader as well, because we needed to bump somebody up. So I'll send, I'll send, I already sent Nightmare up. We'll send Inferno up with him, with Jester on wing. Oop, would help if I can spell. Okay, I want to send, I want to send two more elements. So I'll send... I'll send Flight Leader Hunter with, let's put Freeze on his wing, 
and we'll send we'll send Fang with who do I want to put on his wing? We'll put Flash on his wing. We have plenty of F4F, so we can give it one more. Well, do we have enough pilots to give it one more? Uh, if I put... If I put Tango and Knight together, that would work. Okay. Pilots are assigned. I'm going to do a little bit more note-keeping off-camera. Then when we come back, we'll be ready to check takeoffs. Now we're all ready to check for takeoff, so once again, I'm on, I've kind of been glossing through it, but these are the tables I've been using so far. We're about to hit the, we're about to check for takeoff and landings. Each of our pilots, I want to see a seven or more, and we were modifying by plus two for clear weather. So Ruff will get his, first, let's try his takeoff first. Seven plus two is nine. He'll be off the ground. That's a good takeoff for Ruff. Which means I'll start getting my counters out. I potentially need five Wildcat groupings. There's one. I'm still on the plain computer paper. I'm going to... I'm still planning on getting those swapped out at some point with the wood blocks and the sticker paper. That I've printed on that. All right, so those are all ready. We know Ruff's off the ground. Let's see if Nightmare is getting off the ground. Nine plus two is eleven. He's off the ground, which means Ruff and Nightmare will form up in the air. Next up, we have Jester's attempted takeoff. Let's see what he rolls. Five plus two is seven, thanks to modifiers. Jester's off the ground. Means we need another one of those. Let's see if Inferno joins him off the ground. Seems like we picked a good day to fly, unlike where I really live, where it's been rainy all day. Eight plus two is ten. Inferno's off the ground as well. Over to Hunter, who's got our two kills so far on... He's got two of our kills so far. Or two of our hits, I should say. Eleven plus two is thirteen. He's off the ground as well. Which means we need another element of Wildcats. Now does his wingman Freeze join him? Ten plus two is twelve. His wingman joins him. Now let's see if Fang gets off the ground. Eight plus two is ten. Fang's off the ground as well. Actually, yeah. Next up we have Flash. Eight plus two is ten. Flash is also off the ground. This is actually a refreshing change. You, most of my missions, as I've been playing in this game so far, have been ending with a lot of crashes. Apparently the runway at Henderson Field decided to stop giving us lip. At least for today, anyway. Tangle up next. There's a one hiding in there, but a five plus two is seven. We'll get Tangle off the ground as well. Let's see if his wingman joins him. We'll roll the die. Seven plus two is nine. Knight's off the ground. So all of our elements are forming up as planned, which is excellent for us. Citing the final Japanese force, first we need to roll for 
2d6 to determine if the weather, if the sighting report was accurate. And we only have a plus one, so I don't have a lot of faith in this report, but that's part of why I put so much more up in the air than I thought I would need. A 10 plus 1 is 11. That's still not an accurate report, so we have to roll... Uh, let's see, so we're, what are we calling that? Right, sighting. We'll have to roll... We'll have to re-roll the mission. I'm not surprised, though, that the reports didn't come in as being accurate. Apparently, the coast apparently was taking a very roundabout route to get the reports to Henderson Field. So let's see what we're actually facing. We're obviously not facing six ACM A6M zeros with an ace. What we are facing, however, is a two. Oh boy. 15 B5N Cates and 12 A6M0. So we are going to have Shotai Supreme to work to deal with. Actual force. 15 B5N Kales and 12 A6M0s. Okay, I will get the... I gotta get the map set up for all of that by which point we'll be ready for combat operations. We're all set up to jump into our first round of air combat, but before we jump in, you're probably looking at your camera, your, you're probably looking at the table right now wondering, Phoenix Knight, what's with all the extra dice you put up here? The dice are actually for me to help keep two things straight. One, where I've got my COs and my flight leaders, and two, the that's what the blue dice are for, the pink dice, are for when I need to roll for something that's affecting us, those are the numbers of the elements I'm going to use. So, now where it might be hard to see, but we're up on the... I forgot to mention during phase six, but we are using a close range interception. So that will burn a total of ten barrels of fuel, whereas a close range, whereas a long range would burn double that. So, first we're going to roll for the Japanese units. They hit on a four hot... Where we're dogfighting the zeros first, so they're going to roll 66. I'll bring the... I'll find somewhere I can put the dice tower down. To bring that in shot, we'll put that right there. I think maybe back it up just a touch. Okay. Got all that set. So the zeros hit on the four and up. Yikes. We're rolling a lot of attacks. So, I'm just going to start making some notes. Round one versus the zeros. Japanese attack. They rolled a one, three, four, five. One, three, four, five, five, five. That is four hits. And remember, we had Shotai Supreme to deal with, so that was an extra 2d6. We need to roll a lot of defense, but we're going to get a little bit of help on that because since we've got we've got five elements in there, so we get 5d6. Jester and Hunter, being flight leaders, give us another 1d6 for them. And then since we have Ruff in the squad in this mission squadron as well, he'll give us another two for a total of 96. If I've got that wrong, Thomas, I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments down below, either on one of the Facebook posts or in one, yeah, one of the Facebook posts or in the comments to this video. But I think that's all straight 96. Hopefully we can actually get some hits here. Let me just make a note so I'm. So we need to see some defense here. Alright, so they defend on a three. We rolled one, three. They defend on a three and lower, hit on a four and up, or on a five and up. That's a four. I'm trying not to turn that. So we rolled three defends and two hits. Which the four hits. Alright, so just making some notes here. 
one, three, three, four, fours, two, sixes. So we pick up two hits, but we've got to do, actually we get three defends, but we only get two hits. So we're going to roll for each hit to see. I think the way we roll for this is we roll to see who all gets shot down. So two of them are going to get defended. Actually, three are going to get defended. Right? Yes. So that'll net out to... So the three defense will net out to one hit. I'll make a note here. The question is which element's going to be affected, and that's where the that's where the pink dice are going to come in. So our one through five, six is going to be a reroll. That's element two, so this element, which was Jester and Inferno. One to three, Jester's shot down. Four to six, Inferno's shot down. Six means Inferno is shot down. We need to find out if he bails out. That's on the dogfight. We want to see a one to four to see if he bails out. Two says he does bail out. I guess for that one, the... I guess the narrative will work into that is he was able to get out before the fuel tank exploded. So the two element will flip over, which means Jester's now alone on that. The Japanese will pick up three victory points on that. So three VP. We net out to two hits, which means we need to roll for credit on those. So we'll roll for the first hit. Once again, we'll do the same We'll do the same roll here. One through five. That's going to element four, which was Fang and Flash. One to four, Fang gets the credit. Five to six, Flash gets it. That's a two, so Fang gets credit for the first hit. And the second one... There's a one, so up to Rough and Nightmare. Once again, one to four, Rough gets credit. Five to six, Nightmare gets the credit. Nightmare gets the credit for that second hit. Before we move into the second round of combat, I've got to make some notes here. Uh, that's an air mission. Air. Um... Air shut down. Who else went up? Hunter went up again. Air freeze. Night flash. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tango went up. I think Fang went up as well. He just got one of our hits. Duh. One, two. Six, seven, eight, nine. Looks like I put Nightmare up as well on his first day back from his last injury. Okay, so now that I've got that figured out, now we're going into round two. And now we want to go after those bombers. So round two is Wildcats versus the B5N Kates. So this is one thing I got wrong in my airplay in my last airplay through. So we are going after the bombers this time. This is one of the things I messed up in my practice playthrough is only the 
is only the bombers count on the return to base play through on the return to base check. So the Kates are getting five d six. They hit on a six, defend on a one. Technically, all this combat, I believe, is simultaneous, but we'll see what they roll here in a second once I get everything ready. So they have one defend, one, two, four, five, and five, which amounts to one defend. Hopefully we can get some serious damage in against that, but let's see what we roll. So we lost the, so we lost Inferno, who got shot down, but thankfully he was able to bail out. We get our 96 once again, because we've got our, our CO, two flight leaders, and two full, and actually five, four full elements and the partial. So let's see what we roll here. Actually, they hit on... Yep, yeah, we got two hits. Okay. So they hit on a five and up. Wow. We did some... Looks like we did some serious damage. So... We got a whole bunch of defends, but also a whole bunch of hits. Oop, that was a three. That was a five. Six and six. So we rolled... That is a roll I will take all day long. So one, two, three threes, two fives, and two sixes. Which translates to five defends, so we're not... Well, we didn't have any hits from the... Uh, we didn't have any hits from the bombers to worry about. Five hits, or five defends and four hits, which will net out to three hits because the Japanese did, because the Kates did roll one defend. Which means we gotta roll for credit on those. So our first bomber, and actually I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use the red dice, the red dice, one of the red dice since it's right here. So I'll roll, I'll roll blue for credit, or blue for element, red for credit. All right, so element two means Jester gets the first hit. Because we rolled element two, and Jester is the only pilot in that anyway. So any, so any roll, if the blue die comes up as a two, would have been for him. So we're actually on this box now. All right, element three was Hunter and Freeze, so Freeze gets the credit for that one. And for the last hit, we give that one. Six is going to be a re-roll, but whoever, but whoever rolls we have to re-roll the element, but whoever's main, the main pilot in whichever element we roll is going to get the credit for the last hit. Which is Jester once again? So Jester picks up two kills on that one. That one... I know I'm not supposed to think of the bombs as individual bombs. I'm trying to figure out how we swallow this in terms of a dogfight, though. Maybe he got... Maybe he was skilled enough... Maybe as a flight leader, he was theoretically skilled enough to be able to get off the... to be able to move from one target to the next. That's the only way I can swallow that. But we also need to figure out if the Japanese are returning to base. But before we do that, we're picking up a total of... We're picking up six victory points from that. The Japanese get... Okay, right, so 6 VP from the, from the hits on the zeros, and then 6 more from hitting the, from hitting the Kates. 
We need to figure out if, they're, if the Japanese are returning to base, and I've got to double check how that works. I think the way it works is... Mm, when a Japanese bomber formation loses at least one, we lost three. Japanese bombers... Okay, so we're still going to have to deal with the zeros then, which means we shot down... We shot down two of them, so we're going to be doing that, but we have to find out if the bombers are returning to base. On a, on a 7 plus, they are returning to base, and we're adding three to this roll. That's a 1, so the bombers are not returning to base. Which means here, we are going to have to deal with the... We are going to have... The, bomb, the Japanese are going to get to Henderson Field and be able to strafe it. So, I believe we dogfight... Actually, we start off with the anti-aircraft artillery. So, we're, the anti-air is going to be taking aim at the zeros, I believe. I'm just looking here. Yes, the anti-air goes first. So... Henderson Field gets 3d6, but they need a 6 to hit. We're going to have a messy roll to figure out what they actually hit. Or do we, have to we might have to declare what they're aiming at. Um, well, let's see how many hits they roll. So, round 3. Okay, actually, before we do that, return to base no. Round 3. Uh, strafing Henderson Field. Anti-air. Once again, remember we need a six to hit with the anti-air. Which we get two sixes in there. So that'll be two hits. Which I believe nets out in the wash here. Determine which element was affected. Okay, so we determine which zeros are affected. So I'm going to need a d10 for this one because we'll be rolling 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 is a reroll. So that's going to be another... Um, actually... I wish it clarified in here a little bit more what... We probably have to declare what we're aiming at. Actually, no, we don't. Okay. So it looks like randomly. Okay, so we'll do it the... we'll do it that way. A four means we affect this round, this group of zeros. So that's going to be one zero, and for the other one... So actually I should have flipped over three of the... Yeah, three of the Kates. Should have had one taken out of them. As for the other element that's affected... Element number nine means this bomber, that element's affected. So, that's the anti-air, which means we'll be picking up another six VP from that. Now we've got our dogfights, because we don't have any... The next thing would be... Actually, yeah, next thing would be the dogfights. So we're going to dogfight with the... Um... I'm just saying what we want to dogfight. Do we want to dogfight with the... I think we want to dogfight with the zeros again. So they're still rolling 4d6. Let's see what we roll here. One, two twos, and a four. So they get one hit. Actually, we probably have to roll for the Kates as well. 
So they pick up a one. They'll be trying to bomb. So they pick up, yeah, they pick up one hit to the zeros. As for the Kates, They're trying to work over Henderson Field, and we've got five elements of them, so 5d6. Fortunately, they need sixes. Which they get none, thankfully. So one, one, three, four, five. No hits. So let's see what happens when the U when the Wildcats attack. We'll be rolling our 96 once again. And I think we're going after the I think we're going after the zeros again. Oh wait, what's that icon on I believe that's land-based artillery? Uh, red is Japanese bombing, okay. Right. Okay, so we're rolling for the... So we're dogfighting with the zeros again. Actually, let's dogfight the Kates. That's probably a better idea. No hits, but they picked up two defends. Did the Kates. So let's see what the Wildcats roll. Before we finish resolving all that, I need to take a small break. I was just taking note of the rolls off camera, so we had a one, three threes, a four, two fives, and two sixes, which for us translates to uh, th four defends, and we picked up four hits as well. Only the four was a dud for us. All right, so the hit gets canceled out from the zeros all day long. And then we have to figure out which elements get affected by... I think we were dogfighting the... Right, we were dogfighting the zeros. So our four hits... So our four hits are going to take out four of the zeros. we got to figure out who gets credit for each of them. So once again, we'll grab a blue die and a red die, and we'll roll it the same way that we did before. Blue die for the element, red for credit. Six will be a reroll, but somebody's main, but the main gunman in somebody's, in some one of the elements is going to get credit for it. That's a five, so that's back to Tango who gets that. We have to allocate four hits, right. So Tango gets one, second hit goes to, three was, right, Hunter and Freeze, so Freeze picks up, Freeze picks up another hit on that one, over, over Henderson Field, next up. going to get, uh, the element's going to get re-rolled once again. Element's going to get re-rolled again, because we can't have six on only five elements. There we go. Element four, which was Fang, so Fang is getting credit for another one, which means this time we're picking up 12 victory points on this one. And then for the last hit... Five is going to tango once again. 
probably was able to dogfight and get off the enemy's tail. So that's four zeros that got shot down. We'll say, we'll take both of these two elements off the board. All right, and then they're gonna turn and head for home at this point. But we're gonna have one last dogfight. So the Japanese now only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seventy, seventy-six that they're rolling. So round four. Japanese attack. That two, four, six, seventy-six. Uh, we're gonna dogfight the. We're going to dogfight with the... I don't think it matters who we dogfight with. We'll dogfight with the zeros. So the zeros only have two D... have only have two elements left. So they're rolling 2D6. A 1 and a 6, so they're picking up one hit. Whereas for us, we've got our Mammoth of 96 that we're rolling. Let's hope we can do some serious damage here. We should be able to, though. We also need to pick up at least one defend, though. which we do easily from the looks of it. Yeah, we pick up, we've got a one, we've got one, one, two, three, three, one, one, two, three, three, five, five, six, six. So we pick up five defends and four hits, which means the one hit bounces off our wall of defends and then we've got to allocate four hits. So that'll be another 12 VP on zeros. Once again, you guys know the drill by now. We're going to roll, we'll get all that out. Blue for element, red for credit. <clears throat> all right, that's another hit for, that's another one for Tango. He's been picking up a lot on this mission. Next up we have... One, and Nightmare is going to pick up another hit. Next element. Our next hit goes to... Three... That's another one for Hunter. Hunter's had a pretty good day. Actually, we've all had a pretty good day, all told. And our last hit's going to... Hunter... No, that's... Nightmare picks up another one. So Nightmare's had... Nightmare's picked up a total of three hits on the day. And that's the last combat box, so now I'm going to get the... Now I'm going to make my notes and get ready for landings. So we'll find out if we're able to get our pilots home. Let's see if we can get everybody down safely. First up is rough. Fortunately, we're plus two on landings as well. So let's see what happens here. Ten plus two is twelve. Rough's on the ground. Nightmare. One plus... So five plus two is seven. He's on the ground. Jester. Seven plus two is nine, so we're there. Jester's on the ground. 
Uh, who got shot down? Inferno got shot down, so we're not actually checking for his landing. Hunter, who's well on his way, who after a day like today... Actually, we got a lot of people on their way to becoming aces. Five plus two is seven hunters on the ground. Freeze is up next. Nine plus two is eleven. Freeze is also on the ground. Fang up next. Eleven plus two is thirteen. Fang is also on the ground. I think we picked a great day to fly. Flash is up next. Six plus two is eight. He's on the ground. All good landings so far. Tango up next. Five plus two is seven. Another good landing. And last up we have Knight. Five plus two is seven. He's also on the ground. All right. End of mission assessment. Let's see if we're being tasked with a new mission. Hopefully not, because we've had a really good day. So I want to see a three or up. I'm just going to make a note here. That's a two, so we are being charged with an additional mission. But I don't think... So we're going to loop back to phase one. We're not going to fly a combat air patrol on this one. If there's nothing coming our way, we're probably just not going to fly it. So let's see what we're rolling. Unfortunately, we do have a plus two weather mod. So I'm hoping we roll... I'm hoping we roll, roll a sea mission, honestly. Five is another air mission, but I don't think we have enough air pilots. I don't think we have enough pilots that I would trust in the air to fly this one. But let's see what the Coast Watchers are going to give us. So... Uh... Bougainville... New Georgia, Santa Isabel, Savo Island, and West Guadalcanal. All right, so now we've got all those noted. Let's see what we're rolling here. First up for Bougainville. That's a very cock die, so we'll roll that. We'll re-roll that, I should say. That's a one, so they're not telling us much. Next up is New, New Georgia. Four is not giving us anything either. Santa Isabel. Five is giving us a plus two report. Toonie Bully. Now for Sao Island. They're giving us a plus one, another plus one report. Mountain above Panweli. 
and West Guadalcanal. is giving us nothing. Okay, no radar. Reported Japanese force. Let's see what they think we're facing this time. They think we're facing, they think we've got the hammer coming down on us. So they think we've got 18... Reported force is 18 G4M Betty. And 12 A6M zeros with an ace. With a quintuple ace. Yikes. And unfortunately, we're at a point right now where all of our Wildcat pilots have either flown or are injured. So... We can't put anybody else up from the from the Wildcat Brigade. The SPDs aren't really good for aren't really good in the air in in a dogfight like this. And the SPDs aren't or the P four hundreds aren't really going to do much for us on that either. So yeah. Unfortunately I don't think we really have anything we can do about that, so I'm not gonna be able to put anybody up. Which means we're going to roll no interception. Which means we're going to go for no interception because we're not going up. So I'm going to set the... I'm going to get everything set up for our no interception run. And we'll hopefully not get our base blasted into smithereens. But let's find out. I'll put a die down to represent my anti-aircraft... My anti-air artillery. So it, it's going to roll 3d6. And it's going to take aim at the Bettys that are coming to work it over. So we need sixes to hit. And we get none. Now for the Bettys. They need, fortunately, actually I think they need... They need sixes to hit. Actually no, they need fours to hit on a bombing run. All right, so we've got, yikes. So we've got 66. Yep. So hopefully we don't get a lot of hits. We get no hits. We got hella lucky on that one. So actually, wait a minute. They hit on fours, don't they? We took two hits. That could have been a lot worse. Three, three, four, five. So we do take two hits. And they'll pick up four victory points, I believe. Yes, so that'll be a total of eight victory points for the Japanese. Which means we need to roll on the hits resolution table. We'll just roll two of our D6s for that. And we'll see what we get. Hopefully fives and sixes. We get a four and a five. So we take a runway hit. Which means we're minus one until end of next game day. And insignificant damage, thankfully. As for the zeros who are going to be strafing, next we're going to, once again, we get our anti-aircraft. So we get that first. Hopefully we roll something a little better than two, three, four, because I'd like to actually pick up some hits. Actually, before we do that, I need to change my battery. Now we're rolling for, we're back to rolling for anti-air artillery. We need sixes to hit with the Henderson Field Artillery. Five, five, six, so we do pick up one hit. A 
course, we're aiming at the zeros, so the uh, we'll roll for this randomly. One, two, three, four. We can't shoot down the ace until last. Five to six is a re-roll. Yeah, five and six are re-rolls. A one, so we take one off of the A6M zero. Uh, apparently we don't score VP for the anti-air. But the... The zeros will now do their strafing thing, so they hit on fours when they they hit on fours when they strafe, right? No, they hit on threes when they strafe. Oh joy! And they pick up one point. It looks like per hit. Wait, number to inflict. Okay, so it looks like they pick up one victory point per. Hit they inflict. So we need two, three, four. I believe it's sixty-six for a quintuple ace, but it seems like it's gonna be a lot more than that. Um, for every five. Yikes! Okay, so that's another five d six. So actually, it's for a quintuple ace. Yeah, that's another five d six. So one, two, three, four plus five is ninety six. This is gonna be bad. Uh, four, nine, okay. Yikes. So the zeros are going to be probably doing a lot of damage, just our, just our luck here. Yeah, that's going to be really bad. So, two, we're going to be rolling for a while on hits. Three, three, three threes. Three fours, a five, and a six. That is a total of eight hits, but another and another eight VP for the Japanese. Yikes. Alright, well. Live and learn. Five, six, seven, eight. Hopefully we'll pick up some insignificant damage, but I'm not betting on that. <sighs> Let's see what our first hit is. Like I said, we'll be rolling at this for a while. So pack a lunch, bring a flashlight, and pop some popcorn while you're at it. First hit is insignificant damage. We need a lot of those here. Second up. A one, that's a few that's fuel, which we're going to be losing. I'll roll another D6 for that. We're losing one fuel. That could have been a lot worse. Next up. Five is another insignificant damage. Next up, we've got five more hits to roll for. So yeah, we're going to be at this for a while, like I said. Four is runway again, so we're at another minus one. Next up. Four is another runway. Good grief, our runway is just... I'm pretty sure we're not going to have a runway at this point. It's going to be more like pothole, pothole, pothole. I doubt we're flying our next mission day, to be honest. One is more fuel. We're losing another... another six barrels of it. Fun, fun. Next hit up. Bivouac. We did not need that at all. Which means we are getting D3 pilots hit. Two pilots. 
Let's see, the way I had to roll this was I think I ended up having to roll 2d20 with rerolls. I'm going to have a new system in place by the time this game gets back to the channel. I'm going to have a new system and new counters in place by the time this game gets back to the channel. I can tell you that right now. So first pilot that we're checking for is number 28. I think we're starting from the F4Fs. 18 and 9 is 28. Looks like that's Flame who can take a hit. And he is... Okay, so we want to see threes here. Three and up. That's a light wound. He'll be out for... For D6 days. He'll be out for one day. So he barely gets scratched. Let's see. Flame we found was in the... So he actually he was already out. So we'll just add another day... Of recovery to that. Next up. Next pilot up. Pilot 33. 19. 31. 2. 3. Kenner, who actually had recovered nicely. Let's see what happens with him this time. Kinder is unfortunately going to take a serious wound and be transferred out. So, right. Where was he? Oh, here we are. And this was for the 26th. Yes. So, serious wound. Kinner is out completely. And then we have one more hit we need to roll for on Henderson Field. Insignificant damage. Oh, fun, fun. So now they're finally flying off. Which brings us right to end of mission assessment. Are we being sent up again? Thankfully we are not. So now we can actually... fall into end of day details. I'll take a small break and then we'll come back with the, the post-flight stuff. Now that our runway looks a lot more like Swiss cheese than it already was, now let's go into our post-flight assessment. So, disease and infections up first. Hopefully we get nothing here. We could use we could use a pretty quiet night actually. That's a four, so no infections there. Now looking at pistol peat artillery. See what happens there. Hopefully no salvos. Three salvos but no hits. Now looking at washing machine Charlie. Just making, I'm again making notes off camera. All right, washing machine Charlie. No hits, thankfully. All right, night infiltration. Let's hope we duck. Let's hope we just duck all the whammies here. Okay, night infiltration. No attempt, thankfully. And Louis the Louse with Naval Bombardment. Let's see what we roll here. Oh joy, we've got good flares on Henderson, so we've got more hits. Let's see how many we've got. We've got one hit. Roll D3, which is a D6 divided by 2. So our hit here continues turning our runway into Swiss cheese. 
So, how many runway hits does that make for us? That makes three, which sounds to me like we are not flying at all on the 27th. But like, we got to roll to see if there's a random event. That is a that is a 1d6 roll. One, we do have a random event. Let's see what we get. 2d6 for that. That's a 10. Oh, wow. That was perfectly timed. Extra fuel delivery. And I was worried about the fuel we were losing from getting our hits. So we get plus 100 barrels of fuel. That was timely. And that's every, that's actually it for our mission. So let's total up the VP that we picked up. So VP, US, Japanese. Let's see, the Japanese picked up, is that, why did I think that was one, three victory points? A strafe bomb, okay, so, wait, that means, four, three means that, four and then three victory points are scored per hit? So I think I've been totaling up the VP all wrong for that throughout this mission. Or have I? Uh, yeah, I think I have actually. So the zeros picked up one hit on the first combat box of the first air interception. We picked up two on the... Then we picked up another... That's out to three hits, so that's another three VP. So that's five. Um, seven VP. Uh, no, we don't. I think I don't think we pick up hits on the anti-air. That's another four VP for U.S. going after the zeros. Another 4 VP there. Okay, so let's total this up. 2, 5, 9, 13. Yeah, 13 for the US. And the Japanese are picking up 1, 9, uh, the Bettys were 4-4, four, four. so yeah, they pick up 8 victory points on that, and 8 hits from the zeros. 16, looks like 16 victory points to me, so we're going to end up losing on the day, which is unfortunate, but sometimes that's the way it goes on Guadalcanal. So as far as the week is concerned, where are we at? 16... And 13 is 29. 29 to 15. We're still actually winning on... We're still actually winning on the week, but given that we're basically not able to fly our next mission day because the runway turned completely into Swiss cheese on us, that's going to that's gonna hurt us very much going into the last mission of the week. But that will do it for this playthrough of Mag 23 Guadalcanal. What's scheduled on the channel coming up Tomorrow, Mystical Munchies continues out of the World of Warcraft official cookbook with the side cornmeal biscuits. Sunday, the fall campaign in Arkham Horror, the card game continues with the seventh scenario, Return to Black Star's Rise. Wednesday, we're playing Aeon's End. And Thursday, I'll be live on Jester's channel with Arkham Horror, the card game. Whether we're doing a side scenario for the fall campaign or a standalone remains to be seen, but we'll find out Sunday. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.